Hi friends, it's Sarah from ruffleshandrainboots.com and today we're making holiday gnomes with flower pot hats. If you would like to make them, just boop and boop, stick around. As always, please like this video so I know you're here crafting with me. Now, if you happen to hear some snorting sounds, that's my sister's French bulldog. Ah, uh, he's very loud. So here are these two cuties. I'm going to share the types of fur I use, the sizes of everything, and two ways to make them. All right, so the first supply we're gonna need is from the Dollar Tree. Actually, most of this is from the Dollar Tree, and they're socks. These flower pots, two and a half and three and a quarter inch pots, are also from the Dollar Tree. I just painted them white. I'm going to be using a paint for the hats a foam brush and then any picks or ribbons or anything these are both from the Dollar Tree we're gonna need a hot glue gun some scissors and something to cut your faux fur you can also use yarn so I get asked a lot about the socks with the little nubby things on the bottom I don't know what they're called they little plastic rubbery thingies so Sarah doesn't fall on the freshly mopped floors all right, so this gold was a complete and utter failure. Mm, don't know why, but it really would not stick. So I wiped it off and moved on to some red chalk paint from my little tiny pot. And this works really well. I think I'm gonna stick with chalk paint when it comes to clay pots, unless they're going outdoors. So I'm just gonna wipe off the rest of the gold there and then cover this one in a white chalk paint as well. So let me know down in the comments below. I keep looking for Waverly chalk paint. I never really go to Walmart, but whenever I go, I look for Waverly chalk paint because that's where I used to get it. Now I can't find it. I don't know if it's sold out. Where do you get your Waverly chalk paint? This is, I don't know if it's Walmart brand. It's, it's okay. All right, so now that you've got those painted, including the bottom and just on the inside of the hat, we're gonna need something to stabilize. In my previous flower pot hat video, I shared using wood rounds because I had a million of them, but you can use jar lids and you can also trace your flower pot onto cardboard and cut on the inside of that circle and it works just as well. Also from the Dollar Tree, I grabbed some rocks for weight. These are just, I don't know, vase filler maybe. Um, and then I'm just going to place the lid all the way down into the sock and make sure it's pulled up on the side and then I'm gonna grab my hot glue gun and kind of just pull down one side, hold it in place, and then I'm gonna glue and then repeat that on the other side. And this is just so that they don't move around. This is a quick and easy craft. I mean, the longest thing it took me to do was paint and I used my heat gun so that it would go really quickly. This was a fun one. My daughter really likes this one, <laughs> by the way. She thinks these are the sweetest. All right, so once that's glued in place, we're gonna try and find the opening I made. I promise, I, I thought I was prepared for this, but I'm just going to be throwing a couple handfuls of weight into the stock. No rhyme or reason. I just wanted it to be pretty sizable because those clay pots are pretty heavy for their size. I'm gonna be filling up quite a bit of this sock with polyfill because I do want a round rotund gnome. If you don't want to buy polyfill from the craft store or on Amazon like I do, you can go ahead and go to Walmart or other big box stores, even Dollar Tree, and get their pillows and rip them apart. Okay, so I get asked a lot about when you know it's ready. If you squeeze it and it bounces back, that's enough stuffing. So we're going to make sure that we tie the knot just back of center so that we have this nice big sloped front because again, our hats are going to be tipped back. So we want to decorate the nice big rotund front. It's going to sit like this. And it's going to kind of sort of lean back. All right. So I'm, I don't know. I just play with these things. We don't need all this excess and I'm going to use it for something else. I'm sure later because my scrap bin is like literally overflowing, but I'm going to stiffen this part up a bit because our, our hat is actually going to be supported by this. So I'm going to glue it together for the fur. I'm using fabric stock fabric.com Shannon fabrics, Lux yak fur in the color vapor and it's $40 a yard, but we don't buy it by the yard. We hit this little buy a $3 swatch button. That's how we work here. All right, so the great thing is you get this pretty sizable, you know, eight by 10, 10 by 10, I don't even know what it is. You can see it's a nice big cut, but the bad part is, look at this. There's a lot of fallout because they cut it with scissors, just like you get at the craft store. Keep all of that aside and use it to stuff a gnome later. I'm gonna use it on my next gnome. 
but that's the only drawback is when they don't cut it with just cutting the fabric backing it does shed quite a bit so I'm gonna just cut it right off the edge here because there's just so much fallout and no long fur this is a really long pile fur and that's what we want it to look like we don't want these hacked off pieces right look it's still coming off and just pull it off there all right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just cut a sort of rounded off V you can use a rectangle you can use a triangle you can use a rhombus like it no one needs to tell you what shape to cut just make sure you're only cutting that fabric backing and it goes a lot easier you can use scissors I find it to be tedious so I like using an exacto knife or a razor blade and look what you get Ooh, gratuitous first shot pulling away this long gorgeous fur enough of that all right so we're just gonna glue this right up onto our body just about I know it's sort of like an inch lower than the top because we do want the top to be covered but I wanted a little bit of overhang down over the edge of the body again personal preference no making is about what you want and about what you have on hand I'm just here for some inspiration we're gonna glue that down <clears throat> excuse me glue that down making sure it's secure on both the top and the bottom and then we choose a nose you can choose a wood round you can choose a wood bead. You can choose a pom-pom. That one's too big. You can make one out of nylons, which I've showed on this channel before. All you're going to do, no matter what you choose, is use something to split the fur to its fabric backing. Add a generous portion of hot glue. If you are using a wood bead, go ahead and put it sort of at an angle where the bottom hole is covered by the fur. The top will be covered by the hat. I get asked about the chalk pastels. So these are the ones from the Dollar Tree. They're not the best, but they totally work. All you're gonna do is warm it up and then add a little color and use your finger or a dry cloth to spread it around. It gives a nice little blush. You can also use these on fabric to get a little blush on cheeks if you're making gnomes with cheeks. So here's where you just put an inordinate amount of hot glue on the front of this thing all the way up to that knot we tied we're actually going to put a little bit more on the front of this gnome hat or gnome nose and then what we're going to do is tuck it up under here and then flip the entire thing over and let gravity bring these two things together look at that it's fate they were meant to be together and then we're just going to do the same thing on the sides flip it over let gravity do the work flip it over let gravity do the work See, these are silly easy. I love these. You can get so crazy with them. You do not have to use sock bottoms. I've made um, a fleece bottom before. I did not try felt yet. So if you'd like to make a felt bottom with the sewing machine, you can. So I get asked a lot about these socks with the nubbies. Do not cut them off. You will cut a hole in your sock. So on the heel, I'm going to make a smaller one for my smaller hat. So I'm gonna cut just under the heel. You save that other piece though, okay? So we're gonna do the exact same thing as we did before. So I'm just gonna sort of speed through this and we're just attaching our little um, round to the bottom making sure it sits flat and then adding our weight and our poly fill now do grab a string or something to tie off twine maybe at the top because we won't have enough for a nice big knot but we still need to create the crown that our hat will sit on right so uh, here you go you can see mine's a little too tall right now it's obviously not fitting so on the nubby things somebody tell me what they're called use the comments tell me what they're called I'm going to push the weight all the way to the front I'm gonna push the stuffing all the way to the front because I'm going to cover that up with the beard if you don't want to do that go the other way and I mean you can always hem this bottom if you'd like but use the top of the sock the ankle portion at the bottom and then just cover it up with the other half of the sock but I'm not gonna do that because I need more scraps in my life. So I'm going to just make sure that this is solid. Again, the hot glue will make this become pretty stiff and that's what we want. Again, this is how we're supporting our flower hat. For the beard on this one, I'm using Mongolian fur in frosted gray. I love it. I buy it in bulk from Shannon Fabrics on Amazon.com, but you can get it in a lot of different places. You can even get small cuts of this at some of the craft stores. So I'm just, again, cutting a long rectangle with an X-Acto knife, only cutting the fabric backing. Then I'm gonna stick this over the front of those nubby thingies. And I'm gonna show you, it doesn't cover it all the way but the fur like hanging down will cover. All right, for the nose, my daughter requested a pom-pom. So 
I didn't have any tan or brown colored pom-poms, but here's a white one. And then we're following the same exact steps by putting a silly amount of glue on there and then using gravity to adhere it. So here's what we have. Now for decorations, use what you have. I ripped this off of those ski ornaments at the Dollar Tree. I ripped off the little bow and tied one from a white frosted ribbon. It's super pretty. I got it at Joann's when I needed Rick Rack for my gingerbread gnomes. And then for this one, I'm going to use the same ribbon and tie the same bow, but I'm going to use this sprig of, I mean, let's just, let's just say it's mistletoe. I'm not really sure what that is. It was pretty, so I used it. I cut off a few leaves, cut off a little sprig of the berries from the Dollar Tree pick, and then put the bow on top. And then I added another little sprig of berries right on top of that. And this is done. You see how quick and easy these are? I love these. A lot of people like talking about them and playing with them. They're quite solid. Um, but what do you think? Let me know down in the comments section. As always, thank you for being here. Please like and subscribe for more crafty fun. And here is a Christmas playlist for you.